Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to our business mathematics class. For today, we're going to continue our discussion regarding interest and commission. Under interest, we're going to discuss simple interest on installment payments. There are two types of consumer credit for installment purposes. These are open-ended loan and closed-ended loan. An open-ended loan is a loan that can be borrowed over and over. Credit cards and line of credit are common types of open-ended loans. So these loans have a credit limit and each time a borrower makes a purchase, the available credit decreases. Each payment made also make the available credit limit increase, allowing the borrower to use the same credit over and over. On the other hand, a close-ended loan is a type of a loan that cannot be borrowed once they've been repaid. As the borrower make payments, so the balance of the loan goes down and the borrower will not have any available credit he or she can use on close-ended loans. If the borrower needs more money, he or she needs to apply for another loan. Common types of close-ended loans include mortgage loan, auto loans, and student loans. If the consumer, for example you, purchase an item in an installment loan, you agree to pay off the loan or the purchase by making equal payments at regular intervals for a specific period of time. So the loan is said to be amortized if it is completely paid off by this payment scheme. The total interest on the loan may be equally subdivided to the regular payments or the interest may be computed on the previous balance. So the formula that will be useful co for computing the installment payment and carrying charge of the purchase or loan are days. So one installment payment is equal to the down payment plus the sum of installment payments. Next is we have carrying charge. That is the difference between installment price and cash price. So let's have four examples to understand how to pay in installment. For example, number one, the Fernandos bought a 55-inch LED television. It had a pra cash price of 98,700 pesos. They agreed to pay for it in six months with monthly payments. If the carrying charge was 7,800 pesos, what was their installment payment? So now, let's identify what are your givens. So we have the cash price of 98,700 pesos. Next, we have uh, monthly payments. So, um, number of payments. That is six months. Six months. Okay. Next, we have the carrying charge of 7,800 pesos. Now, the question is, what was their installment payment? So first, we need to find the installment price of the 55-inch LED television. And to get that, we have the installment price is equal to your cash price plus the carrying charge. Okay, so your cash price is 98,700 pesos plus your carrying charge of 7,800 pesos, which will give us an answer of 106,500 pesos. Okay, now we know the installment price. We need to obtain or determine the monthly payment, installment payments. Um, and how do we get that? So, Installment payment is equal to your installment price divided by the number of your payments. Okay, so your installment price is 106,500 pesos divided by 6, and it will give you an answer of 17,750 pesos. Now, next, we need to compute 
for the monthly interest. And to compute for the monthly interest, that is carrying charge divided by number of your monthly payments. Okay? So, um, what is your carrying charge? That is 7,800 pesos divided by 6, which will give you an answer of 1,300 pesos. So, these are the summary of the comp computation. So, remember, we have 6 months with monthly payment. So, that is, we have here the month. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, the cash price of the LED television is 98,700 pesos, right? And then, our monthly interest is 1,300 for six months okay let's put it here and if you add all of this the sum will be um seven thousand eight hundred which means that is your carrying charge and then for the principal payment it says that um uh, we can say that the total of the installment payment is 17,750, right? So that is for six months. So this is um, your, um, your installment price together with your um, monthly interest. So, it will give us a sum of 750. It will give us a sum of 106,750. Therefore, we can say that every month you're paying 16,450. Okay? So, every month, since you already paid for the 7800 so you have an installment payment of 6, uh, 16450 which will give you a sum of 98700 Now, on the first month, you pay 16450 So, let's put it here. Okay. Now, on the second month, we subtract your unpaid balance to your payment. So, your outstanding balance now is 82,250. That is for your second month. On the second month, you also paid 16,450, which will give you a total payment of 32,900. Now, on the third month, your outstanding balance will be 68,000, uh, 65,800. And then again, you paid for another 16,450. On the third month, you already pay an amount of 49,350. Your outstanding balance for the fourth month is 49,350. Now, again, you pay for the fourth month of 16450 The total payment you have now is 65800 And on the fifth month, your outstanding balance is 32900 And then you paid another 16450 You have paid 82250 And on the last month, which is the sixth month, you only have an outstanding balance of 16650 And then your total payment now is 98700 pesos, which will give you a zero balance, meaning you paid that already. Let's have the second example. Winston bought a Toyota Land Cruiser. It has a list price of 3,850,000. He traded in his Mitsubishi Montero Sports for 950,000 and financed at 15% for 36 months. What was his total payment? 
Okay, so first, let's identify what are our givens. So it says we have a list price of 3,850,000 pesos. Next is we have the traded value or the trade-in value, which is 950,000 pesos. Next, we have the rate of 15% or 0 0.5. I, I mean 0 0.15. Next, we have the terms, which is 36 months. And remember, we need to convert this into years. So 36 divided by 12 is equal to 3 years. Okay? 3 years. Okay, now, these are all your givens. The question is, what was his total payment? Okay, let's proceed to the solution. So first, we need to compute for the amount finance. And to get that, that is amount finance, I'll put this as a vibration, uh, equals the cash price minus your trade-in value. So what is your cash price? That is, or your less price, that is 3,850,000 minus the trade-in value, that is 950,000. Okay, it will give you um, 2,900,000 pesos. Now, we already know the amount finance. We need to compute for the interest earned for 36 months. And remember, the formula for the interest is 2, is um, I is equal to P or T. Okay? So next, what is your principal amount? That is 2,900,000 times the rate, which is 0 0.15, times your term or time. That is 3 years. So it will give us a product of 1,300,000. 5,000 pesos. Our third step would be we need to compute the total amount paid in installment. And to compute that, we have total amount is equal to your amount finance plus the interest. So, 2,900,000 plus your interest, 1,000,000 305,000 pesos. So it will give us an answer of 4,205,000 pesos. Okay, lastly, we need to compute for the monthly installment payment. So to get that, that is installment payment is equal to your total amount divided by number of payments. Okay? So, 4,205,000 pesos divided by 36, okay? So, that will be 116,000 um, 116, pesos, uh, 116,805 and 55 cents. So, therefore, we can say that the total payment or his, Winston's total payment would be 4,205,000 which will be paid by monthly payments of 116,805 pesos and 55 cents. Sample number three. Using credit card, Reina purchased a bag amounting to 15,000 payable in 3 months at 12% per annum. The principal will be paid in 3 equal monthly payments of 5,000 pesos. Compute for the total interest and present the tabular presentation, um, tabular computation. Okay. So for this question, we're going to use the simple interest formula. 
So that is I is equal to PR, PRT. Okay? And first, we need to identify, of course, our given. So your principal amount would be 15,000 pesos. Next, the rate will be 12% per annum or 0 0.12. Another thing, um, our time or our term is 3 months. And then, we need to convert this into years. So, therefore, 3 divided by 12 would be equal to 0 0.25 years. Okay? So, now, let's compute. So, solution. That is 15,000 times 0 0.12 times 0 0.25. And multiplying all of this will give us an answer of 450 pesos. So therefore, the interest is 450 pesos. Now, we need to compute for the monthly interest. And how do we compute that? So, um, Second step, that is monthly interest is equal to your total interest divided by the number of payments. So, 450 divided by 3 months, that is equal to 150 pesos. Now, let's see the, the tabular computation. So, we need to pay it in 3 months. So, here... First month, second month, third month. And it says that our monthly interest is 150 pesos per month. So, in three months, it will give us 450. Now, it says that um, the principal will be paid in three equal, uh, three equal monthly payments of 5,000 pesos. So, meaning every month you're going to pay 500 pesos, ay, 5,000 pesos on top of the interest. Okay? So, that will be 15,000. Now, every month your total payment is 5,150 pesos. So, the total of that is 15,450 pesos. Now, on the first month, you have an outstanding balance of 15,000. And then you paid 5,000, right? So, it will give you a new balance of 10,000 pesos. And on the second month, your balance, your outstanding balance is 10,000. And then you paid for another 5,000. So that will be 5,000 pesos. Okay. And on the third month, you pay another 5,000. Meaning, on the last month, you already paid for this. For our last example, Using a credit card, Soledad bought a necklace in a boutique at a price of 12,000 pesos, payable in 6 months at 9% per annum. The principal will be paid in 6 equal monthly payments of 2,000 pesos. The interest is computed on the unpaid balance each month. Find the total interest and present the tabular um, computation. So, uh, for this question, we need to compute for the equivalent monthly interest of 9% per annum. And to get that, we need to use monthly interest is equal to your annual interest rate divided by 12. Okay? So, 9% 
divided by 12. Or we can convert this to 0 0.09 divided by 12. It will give us an answer of 0 0.0075. Now, we need to compute for the monthly interest generated for 6 months. And let's have a tabular presentation on this. Remember, it says that um, 12,000 pesos is payable in 6 months. Okay? So, on the first month, let's multiply 12,000 pesos to your monthly interest. Okay? That is 0 0.0075. So, it will give us a product of 90. Next, 10,000 multiply by 0 0.0075, that will be 75. So, why, um, why um, 12,000 and then on the second month, it's 10,000? Because of the, of, of the statement, the principal will be paid in six equal monthly payments of 2000. So every month you're paying 2000. Okay? And on the third month, that is 8000 multiply by your monthly interest that is 0 0.0075. So it is 60. And then 6000 that will give us a product of 45. And then, um, 6,000, 4,000, a product of 30. And lastly, on the 6th month, 2,000 multiplied by your monthly interest, that will be equal to 15. Now, we can establish the summary of all the computation. On monthly basis, you're paying 2,000, right? So, let's um, put it here in the principal payment. So, 2,000, 2,000, for 6 months, you're paying 2,000 pesos. Okay. So, that will give us 12,000. And it says on the monthly interest, which we computed earlier. So, on the first month, you paid 90. Second, 75. Third, 60. Fourth, 45. Fifth, 30. And then, on the sixth month, that is 15. Now, it will give us a sum of 315 pesos. Now, meaning, on the first month, you paid an amount of Together with your monthly interest, that is 2,090. Second, that is 2,075. Third, 2,060. On the first, fourth, 2,045. Fifth, 2,030. And lastly, 2,015. So, total amount would be 12,315. And here... For our first month, our unpaid balance is 12,000. Then we pay an amount of 2,000. So that will be 10,000. Second month, that is 10,000. Again, pay an amount of 2,000 on top of your monthly interest. That is 8,000. Third month, 8,000. And then you paid another 2,000. That will be 6,000. And then 6,000, pay the 2,000 pesos on the 4th month, that will be 4,000. And then from 4,000, now it will be 2,000. And on the last month, your outstanding balance is 2,000. Since you paid it already, that will become 0. Meaning, on the 6th month, you paid everything already. Commission is our last topic for this chapter. A person or a firm that represents a company to transact business for another is an agent or also called commission merchant or what we called or what we heard is broker. The company for whom the agent has the power to act is called the principal. 
the fee to an, to an agent or the salesperson is usually specific rate or in percent of the sale, selling price or depending on the structure of the underlying commission agreement. So, a commission is a way of compensation mainly used to pay employees who sell companies' commodities or service. These salesperson are usually paid on a commission of their sales rather than by the R. So the commission is determined by multiplying the amount of sales by the commission rates. So this commission tends to encourage greater productivity and there are many variations in the agreements made. Also, there are several types of commissions such as straight commission, incremental commissions, salary with commission, commission and bonus, and commission with override and draw against commission. So, um, let's have examples regarding these um, types of commission. So for the first one, we have the straight commission. It is a type of commission wherein the salesperson's earning or wage is based on his or her commission alone. So these are the formulas that will be very useful in solving those problems. Let's have examples. Example number one, a real estate agent has a commission rate of 4%. If a piece of property sells for 700,000, uh, 740,000, what was his commission? Okay, so first, the givens are commission rate of 4% or 0 0.04. Now, the amount of sales okay so that will be 740,000 pesos so the formula that we're going to use is commission is equal to the commission rate multiplied by the amount of sales okay so your commission rate is 0 0.04 multiplied by the amount of sales that is 740,000 pesos which will give us a commission of 29,600 pesos so therefore the commission is 29,600 pesos let's jump to example number three since example number two is almost the same as example number one Okay, so for three, Gabriel works on commission basis and received 3.8% on his monthly sales for St. Peter Life Plan without a big salary. What is his commission and total pay during a month when he sells 15 units of Life Plan worth 200,000 pesos per unit? If within the same month, Two customer with each unit cancel the deal. Okay, so there are some cases when customer cancel the order or deal. If this, if um, if it is, if it happens, the sale is not entitled for a commission. So, um, how do we compute for the commission? That is number of units sold is equal that is 15 minus 2 why 2 because two of each customer cancel the deal so therefore he only has 13 units sold and to compute for the total amount of sales total amount of sales okay so number of units sold multiply by amount per unit okay so 13 units multiply by um 200 
thousand per let's put it here per unit okay so that will be two million six hundred thousand pesos so next let's compute now for the commission rate and the formula for that is commission is the commission rate multiplied by the amount of your sales. So remember, we have a 3.8%. So convert that into decimal, that will be 0 0.038. Multiply by 2,600,000. So your commission, therefore, is 98,000. 800 pesos so in 13 unit sold so therefore gabrielle will receive a commission of 98,800 pesos example number four if the commission on sale of 16,950 pesos worth of clothes is 1,271 pesos and 25 cents, what is the commission's commission rate? So now we're looking for the commission rates. And our given for this question is we have commission of 1,271 pesos and 25 cents. We have the amount of sales of 16,950 pesos. And for, to compute for the commission rate, that will be commission rate is equal to the commission divided by amount of your sales. So therefore, 1,271 pesos and 25 cents. Divide by 16,950 pesos is equal to 0 0.075 or 7.5%. So therefore, your commission rate is 7.5%. Example number 5. Melissa Parilla, owner of a lending company, paid her collector 3 3,302 pesos as a commission of 1.3%. What was the amount of collection? So for this question, we're looking now for the amount of sales. Okay, So our given would be commission of 3,302 pesos and our commission rate of 1.3% or 0.013%. To compute for the amount of sales, that will be commission divided by your commission rate. Okay? So 3,302 pesos divided by 0 0.013, it will give us an an answer of 254,000 pesos. So therefore, the collection amounted to 254,000 pesos. Another type of commission is the incremental commission or graduated commission. It is a commission given to salespersons who do not receive a regular salary and their commission rate increases as the sales volume increases. So incremental commission is a greater incentive method of compensation than the straight commission whereby higher level of sales earn increasing rates of commission. It is a way to encourage salesperson to sell more. Um, and then each commission is computed one at a time and added together to obtain the total commission. So for example, number one, it says, Evelyn de Guzman sells OHP projectors for WSS Tech products. She is on incremental commission schedule of 2.5% of sales up to 100,000 pesos. 3% for the next 150,000 pesos and 4% on the sales greater than 250,000 pesos. So the question is, 
what is Evelyn's total gross pay for the last month if her sales volume was 300,000 pesos? Our events for this question will be commission rate for level 1 is 2.5%. Or 0 0.025. Our commission rate for level 2, that will be 3% or equal to 0 0.03. And our commission rate for level 3, that will be 4% or 0 0.04. Now, Using an incremental commission schedule, we determine the pay for each level and then get the sum of all the levels. To compute that, we have level pay is equal to the sales per level multiplied by the commission rate. Okay, so our first, let's compute for the first level pay. Okay, so first level pay that will be. 100,000 multiply by 0 0.025. So it will give you a product of 2,500 pesos. So next, let's compute for the second level pay. That will be 150,000 multiply by 0 0.03, your second commission rate. That will be 4,500 pesos. And lastly, for the third level pay, that is 250,000 pesos multiply by 0 0.04. That will be equal to 2,000 pesos. Okay? And to compute for the total gross pay, that is level 1, plus level 2, plus level 3, okay? So, 2,500 pesos plus um, 4,500 pesos plus 2,000 pesos, that will be equal to 9,000 pesos. So, therefore, that her, um, Evelyn de Guzman total gross pay will be 9,000 pesos. Salary plus commission is another type of our commission. It is when an employee is being paid a guaranteed salary plus commission on sales made by the employee. In this type of salary structure, the certain amount of sales at the beginning of each month is usually not eligible for a commission. Thus, Earnings below the minimum level of sales in units or amount would be solely to the base salary. Only when the minimum amount is achieved will the commission rate go into effect. So to compute for the total gross pay, we need to determine the amount of commission then add it to the salary. Okay, let's have examples. Emmanuel is paid a base salary of 18,000 per month and a commission of 6% on sales over 1,700,000 pesos each month. This month, his sales totaled to 1,546,000 pesos. What were his earnings? Okay, so our given for this question our um sale um i mean salary that is 18000 pesos per month next a commission rate of 6% or 0 0.06 and next the amount of sales that will be 1 million 500 uh, 546000 pesos so now, please take note that the sales does not reach the minimum amount needed. Why? Because it says he will only receive a commission, um, commission rate of 6% on sales over 
1,700,000. Okay? So, therefore, he will not receive any commission. So, now, we already obtained the commission. We will now determine the total gross pay or his earnings. And to compute for that, total earnings is equal to the salary plus the commission. So, your salary is 18000 and then your commission is zero. Okay? So, therefore, um, your earnings or Emmanuel's earning will be 18,000 pesos. Example number two. Jane A. De La Fuente works on a pay schedule of 21,300 pesos per month plus a 3% commission on sales. If she sold 104,900 Last month, what is Janie's total gross pay? Okay, so let's determine the givens. So it says his salary is 21,300 pesos. And then his, um, her commission rate is 3% or 0 0.03. Now, the amount of sales is... 104,900 pesos. So, first, let's compute for the commission. And to get the commission, that is commission equals commission rate multiplied by the amount of sales. So, 0 0.03 times 104,900. It will give us a product of 3,114 147 pesos. So, therefore, this is her commission. Now that we obtained the commission, we're going to determine her total gross pay. And to get the total gross pay, that is salary plus is commission. Okay? Her salary is 21,300 pesos plus 3,147 pesos. So, her total gross pay is 24,447 pesos. Commission and bonus is another type of commission. It is when a salesperson is given a bonus if he or she exceeds his or her sales quota. So, in cases that the sales does not exceed the prescribed quota by the company, the salesperson will not receive any bonus. Okay? Let's have example. So, Leonora Bautista receives a basic salary of 13,750 pesos a month. She also received a bonus of 5% of the amount by which she goes beyond her quota of 75,000 pesos. For the month of February, her sales amounted to 128,000 pesos. What were her total earnings? Let's identify your givens. Okay? So, your commission rate is 5%, right? Or 0 0.05. And then your salary is 13,750 pesos per month. Now, the sales subject to commission is equal to 128,000 minus 75,000 pesos. So, that will be equal to 53,000 pesos. So, first, let's compute for the commission. And again, the formula for the commission is commission rate multiplied by your amount of sales. Okay? So, 0 0.05 multiplied by 53,000. That will give us a product of... 2,650 pesos. So, this is your commission. And to compute for the gross pay, we need to add your salary plus the commission. 
that will be 13,750 pesos plus 2,650 pesos. That will be equal to 16,400 pesos. So therefore, Leonora Bautista's total earning is 16,400 pesos. Next, we have the commission with override. It is when a salesperson earns commission on his or her own sales and also earns commission from the sales of his or her representatives. Okay, for example, Teresita Kadawan receives a 6% commission on her sales. She supervises 12 sales representatives and receive a 2.5% override on all their sales. The representatives made sales of 48,300 pesos and she made sales of 9,400 pesos. What were her earnings? Our givens for this question are... Okay. So the commission rate is 6% or 0 0.06. Now, the amount of sales by Teresita is, let's put Teresita. Teresita is 9,400 pesos. Now, the commission rate on representatives, okay, let's put rep is 2.5% or 0 0.025, okay? Now, the amount of sales of representative is 48,300 pesos. Now, let's compute first for the commission based on Ter Teresita's own sale, okay? So, 1, that is commission 1. Commission rate multiply the amount of sales. So, that will be 0 0.06 multiplied by 9,400 pesos. So, that will be 564 pesos. Now, let's compute for the commission based on her representative sales. Okay? So, commission 2. Same. Commission rate multiplied by the amount of sales. So, that will be 0 0.025 multiplied by 48,300 pesos. It will give us a product of 1,207 and 50 cents. So third, let's compute for the total commission. Total commission is equal to commission 1 plus commission 2. Okay, so what is your commission 1? That is 564 plus 1,207 and 50 cents. So the answer will be 1,771 and 50 cents. So therefore, 1,771 pesos and 50 cents will be Teresita's total commission or earnings. Draw against commission is our last type of commission. This is when a sales person is being paid in advance of sales and later deducted from the commission earned. It is a way for a company to provide its sales per people or person with at least some income during their lean periods of sales. The draw against commission should be lesser than the projected amount of commission. Okay, for the example, Redentor is a salesperson for Zero Corporation. The company pays 7.5% percent commission on sales and gives Redentor a 8,000 pesos per month draw against commission. If he receives drawing at the beginning of the month and then sells 960,000 pesos during the month, how much commission is owed to Redentor? Let's identify the given. 
Okay. So our given for this is commission rate of 7.5% or 0 0.075. Now we have the amount of sales. That is um, 960,000 pesos. Next, we have the amount of draw. That is 8,000 pesos. Now, to determine the amount of commission owed to Redentor, we need to find the amount of commission and the dock is draw against commission. Okay, to compute for that, that will be commission is equal to your commission rate times amount of sales. Okay, so 0 0.075 multiply by 960,000 pesos, that will be equal to 18,450 pesos. So our next step is to um, commission owned or commission O. Okay, so commission minus the amount of draw. Okay, so your commission is 18,450 pesos minus 8 thousand pesos okay so the difference is ten thousand four hundred fifty pesos so therefore redentor will receive the remaining commission of ten thousand four hundred fifty pesos thank you so much class for listening i know we only have two topics which is interest and commission but we tackled a lot Okay, so I will just leave you with a quote of William Clement Stone. Sales are contingent upon the attitude of salesman, not the attitude of the prospect. Thank you and let me know if you have questions and see you on the other on our next class. Bye!